Wow, what an amazing view. I love you. Hello, I'm Adam. Which means I'm Joe. Because you see, this is Adam and Joe Go Tokyo. We're up way past your bedtime, eight hours to be precise, to bring you a snapshot of the future. So hold tight for half an hour of news, music and gadgetry from... It's Tokyo, Ad. Oh, thanks. Coming up on tonight's show, a close encounter with Japan's biggest superhero, Ultraman. We look at Japan's current passion for pets and J-Punk badasses, Guitar Wolf, are here with us in the studio. But now, let's see what's got Tokyo talking this week with the Go Tokyo update. So what's the latest hot film news, Joe? Glad you asked, Dad. Well, the big release this week is called Killers. It's a compendium of five short films made by five of Japan's hottest directors. <sighs> Ouch! Uh, and they're all themed around the idea of surprise, surprise, killing. Let's take a look at a clip. The other interesting thing about this film is that it's shot on video, and uh, unlike kind of Blair Witch or the Dogma films, it doesn't make uh, a big thing about being shot on video, it just is shot on video. And in Japan, that's an acceptable way to make your first film, and it can be shown at the cinemas, and nobody cares. That's good, isn't it? Frankly, Joe, are you ready for this? Yeah. I'm bored of people pointing guns at me, yeah? This, kids, that ain't cool. Yeah? It looks a bit cool. No, it doesn't. It would be cooler if you actually had a gun. Yeah, but I'm doing it like this. Obviously, that wouldn't be cool. But that, hey, is that cool? No, it's not. Stop pointing guns at me. I'm bored of guns. Well, while I've been in the cinema, you've been sitting in your hotel room eating crisps and watching uh, pop promo channels. Yes, I have. And one pop promo that caught my eye this week is this one by Yuki. Now, see if you can figure out what the hell's going on? That's Yuki and Stand Up Sister, a video that's getting a lot of airplay at the moment. Have you seen that one? I have many, many times. <laughs> and if you will spill milk on the carpet, you are going to get some toadstool growth eventually. But is it milk? Well, it's basically an anthem for the sisters. Mm. Um, Stand Up Sister, it's called. About time too. Yeah. I'm guessing that it's kind of celebrating the maternal, life-giving qualities of woman. Uh, and so it probably is some kind of maternal milk leaking out of her. Don't hurry to be loved, she says. What we suppose to shiver is the flaps of our heart. The flaps of our heart? Yeah. Now, these days, technology advances so rapidly that most of us have houses full of old gadgets that are broken and useless. Do you, Adam? Nope. Damn. That ruins my smooth link. But the very clever people at a major Japanese electronics corporation have come up with a solution to this problem, and it is biodegradable electronics. Yes, they are created from polylactic acid, which is a plastic substance made by fermenting corn, which makes the whole thing completely biodegradable. That's right. These are the world's first biodegradable Walkmans. Um, they're 90% biodegradable. 10% uh, of them is metal, uh, but the rest of it is absolutely uh, organic. <laughs> I'm just spreading some jam on this one, because uh, um... if it's organic, then it should be edible. 
The other problem is the headphones they come with aren't that comfortable and the sound's a little bit woolly. But uh, on the plus side, it's a far more healthy way to listen to music. I got you those batteries you wanted. Oh, thanks, man. Get oh. Three, two, one. Ah, if you're wondering what Adam and I are doing, we're playing Gets, the new meaningless game that's a craze all over Japan. And here's a look at the man behind it in action at the MTV Awards recently. That man's name is Dandy Sakano, and the game is called Gets because it gets your attention. He's become really very famous here in Japan just for pointing. Get, get. There is a logical game to gets. It's a little like scissors, paper, stone. You count to three, then you point either up, left, right, down, or straight at each other. And you've got to try and guess which way the other person's going to point. Three, two, one. Gets. gets. That's I not did that. That's not a real move. <laughs> That's not allowed, but I've added that That's, to the whole gets that's phenomenon. Illegal gets. We need a gets, man. I've got one. It's going to catch on globally. OK, give it me. It's going to take us to the top. You Come ready? On, yeah. Hey! And I'm going to call myself the Fonz. That's amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. You know what? I've got one as well. What is it? Hole punch. <laughs> Do it again. Hole punch. Hole punch. Hole punch. Why? It's, well, it's a, I'm punching a hole for file paper. Right. Hole punch. Because I'm thinking, <laughs> no, wait, I'm thinking, th where do these things catch on? It's a water cooler thing. It's yeah. an office thing. Hole punch. Gets. 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 On last week's show, we realised that our desperate struggle to become famous in Japan wasn't really working. We decided this week to make a radical change of tack and get back to basics. Well, this is the reality of trying to make it big in Japan if you're a gaijin or western person like me and Joe. A rainy afternoon in a back street of Tokyo. We're going to go and see Inagawa-san, who runs IMO, the number one talent agency for westerners in Japan, and see if she can help make us famous. There's a huge market for western models in Japan, and we'd heard that sometimes the slightly less than beautiful can slip through the net. Buoyed up by this information, we hoped that we could ride the modelling bandwagon to total media domination. All we had to do today was persuade the agency to take us on. But first, we tried to get some pointers from their star models. Uh, so what nationality are you, John? My father is American and my mother's Japanese. Do you think that it's easier for a, a slightly rougher looking Western person to get a modelling gig out here than it would be back home? It would vary for the job, but I could say probably yes. Sweet. Not only am I quite short, but I'm also quite hairy. Is that going to be a problem for me out no, here? No, 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 not necessarily. There could be a role for, you know, a short hairy guy or something like that, yeah. Yeah, like monkey clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congo 2. L little King Kong. Yeah, all right, stop. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Natalie. Hello. Hello. Uh, Natalie, you're a, a model and an actress. I'm almost actress. Almost an actress. Yeah. We were wondering if you could give us a few tips on sort of posing for these pictures. Of course. <laughs> this is a particularly good one, Natalie. This looks like sort of an advert for maybe some sort of business-related product. Yeah, you've got a very good pout going. Can you just give us a bit? Very good. So, myself and Joe want to get famous out here, and we were thinking of maybe doing some modelling. Do you think we could? Yeah, sure, why not? You have all of your, everything. I mean, you're handsome, you're beautiful, maybe talented. Please, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. It was time for our make-or-break meeting. This was the person we had to impress, the number one agent in Tokyo. By appearance, she's a sweet and unimposing lady, but looks can deceive, as Inagawa-san is one of the most powerful and ruthless agents in Japanese show business. Thank you for seeing us. So, Inagawa-san, yours is the uh, biggest agency in Tokyo for representing Westerners and stuff. Is it easy for gaijin like myself and Joe to get work here? 
Right. We can act up a storm. We can act. We prepared a, a, a short scene to, to perform to you. Would you like to see us act? Yes, please. OK. Uh, could you show me, please? Certainly. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, this is from the film A Few Good Men. I, I'll be playing the Tom Cruise role. Adam will be playing the Jack Nicholson Tom role. Cruise, yeah. It's quite an emotional. I saw that movie. Yes. yes. I'll ask you for the fourth time. You ordered the code red. You want answers. I'm entitled to them. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Son, we live in a world with walls, and those walls have to be protected by men with guns. You don't want the truth. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps beneath the cover of the very freedom that I provide, then questions the manner in which I provide it. Did you order the code red? I did the job I was sent to do. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. <gasps> he admitted it. You see, see, I pressured him. Back me into a corner. He admitted it was amazing. Yes. Yes. Woo! Right. So, what do you think? Excellent. Tom Cruise, より more handsome. Wow. Are we talking? He's, you're definitely talking about Joe, because mm -hmm. my mum thinks mm -hmm. I look like Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. In Agawa-san, I think we both want to try as many things as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we both want to try modelling, we both want to try acting, we both want to try music, we both want to try TV. Mm -hmm. There's no end to our ambitions. What are the best steps we can take now to move this forward? Wow, that's really good, isn't it? Yeah. もしかしてモデルもなされるかもしれませんが、こちらの方はちょっとモデルさんにはちょっと背が大きいかなと思いますから。I'm too short. Do you think it's even worth us uh, having some pictures taken, maybe get a little portfolio together? それあった方がいいと思いますけど、それからちょっとした簡単なレズメとかをあのディレクターに見せて。Score! With an Agawa-san behind us, anything's possible. Her second-in-command, Wayne, tells us what's required from our picture portfolio. Something in a suit would be very nice. And uh, with different personalities you could act out and showing them that you have a variety of styles you could perform. Well, give it a go. Is there any way you could come along and give us some pointers? Definitely. I'll stop by later and see how you guys are doing. Good one. Fantastic. Yeah. OK. All right. An hour later and we're in the studio, quite literally posing our pants off. Is there no beginning to our talents? There we go, we've had the shots done. We're going to have a killer portfolio. Man, we're going to clean up on the Gaijin modelling scene, right, Wayne? Right. I think we got some pretty good shots in there. And I should have you working in about a week. We'd better wipe up after this, anyway. You should wipe up. That's going to do it for us. With those photos, with her help, Next week, we're going to have a killer segment. Are you sure? No. He's Japan's favourite superhero, with a TV show that's been running since 1966, but shows no sign of losing its popularity today. Should the light go out, it will mean Ultraman will never rise again. Over those 37 years, Ultraman has wowed generations of fans by overcoming legions of monsters hell-bent on destroying the Earth. This week's studio guest is the original Ultraman's alter ego, actor Kurobe Susumu. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Welcome, Kurobe-san. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. What is it about Ultraman that's made him the most popular and best-loved superhero in Japan? あの、子供にはね、絶対ヒーローが大きくなっていく過程にプロセスにはね、ヒーローっていうのは絶対必要だと思うんですよ。そのウルトラマンっていうのは37年前でしょ。だから僕はね、初めて日本のそのテレビの
I mean, pretty much started off the Japanese special effects industry, which is now huge, of course. And before Ultraman, no one had ever really seen monsters like this. Kurobi-san, I don't mean to alarm you or bring everything down, but there is actually a monster loose uh, in our studio Seriously? today. Seriously? Yeah. He's savaged uh, several of the crew. In fact, I think he's uh, out there somewhere in the corridor. Ed, you might have to deal with him. OK. Kids, don't worry. I'll sort it out. Uh, OK. So there was a fantastic range of monsters that Ultraman fought against. Not only um, good old uh, atomic ninja Balutan here, but also this great monster that sort of looks as if it's some sort of uh, tumour. And my other favourite is uh, Clamhead here, who kind of um, looks a little bit stupid, to be perfectly honest. Uh, sorry to interrupt you there, but I'm hearing that the monster that's loose in the studio has teleportive powers, and it's teleporting this way right now. Oh! I am terrible. <laughs> He just hit you with the bath plug. Aren't you going to react? You'd have to do more than hoot to defeat me, because I've got plunges on the end of my codes. Would this be an opportunity for Ultraman to use his signature defense move, the Speckium Ray? <laughs> it's devastating. It's devastating. He's down. <laughs> the monster's been thwarted. Thank you so much, Ultraman. You're Please. Like a... Hat off, dearie. There we go, I'll pop it down. Kurobi-san, thanks so much for coming in today. Thank you. And thank you for fighting the beast. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Void! <laughs> Tokyo Shock Boys first formed in 1990, and since then they've rocked stadium audiences across the world and become household names here in Japan with their awesome displays of self-abuse and good humour. And tonight they're here to give us our own special performance. Seriously, don't try anything you're about to see yourself. Brace yourselves for the Tokyo Shock Boys. We are the Tokyo Shock Boys! Nothing! What is this? What is this? Firecracker! What is this? What is Okay. Yes. 
Despite the current economic downturn here in Japan, or perhaps because of it, there's one market that's still booming, the pet business. Rather than talking to their human friends and having depressing conversations, instead the people of Japan are turning to their dogs who can neither speak nor think, but do look fantastically cute. Yes, everyone in Tokyo's frothing at the mouth with doggy fever. What, rabies? No, not rabies. Look, watch this clip. What do you do if, like many Tokyoites, you live in a cupboard-sized apartment but want to share in the joys of dog ownership? Why not head to the petting zoo on the 10th floor of Sunshine City, specifically designed to relieve urban stress? Fork out a mere 500 yen, about £2.50, for the privilege of stroking one of these little beauties for half an hour. Alternatively, you can go one step further and actually rent yourself a dog to take home from Wanko Pet Rentals in Gotanda. Owner Araki-san says most of his customers are nervous young boys who have trouble talking to the ladies and need a cute little puppy as a prop. For 1,500 yen, they can rent an Afghan for an hour, or for 10,000 yen, take top dog Juna the Chihuahua home for a night. Chihuahua is Japan's most popular dog, and it's not surprising when the population is being fed bizarre promos like this one for a website selling Chihuahua accessories. Advertised on giant video screens all over Tokyo, it features go-karting dogs and even a strangely arousing Chihuahua in a bikini. Whoa. Tokyo's pet madness even extends to a bakery for pampered pooches. For Wuffle's special day, at Three Dogs in Daikanyama, you can splash out on a full-blown birthday cake. The business was started to help dogs with eating disorders and has a long list of satisfied customers. Pet fervor continues apace with a Tokyo company that goes as far as making your dog the star of his very own pop video. For the equivalent of £950, Story Fact Video will sample his bark, put it to an original melody and shoot a jazzy little promo to go with it. Pooch stars, here we come. But every dog has its day, and when yours comes, what better way to say goodbye than with a traditional Japanese funeral ceremony, complete with incense burning, prayers, and a final resting place for your dearly departed. Sit, stay, roll over. We can't emphasize enough how big the dog phenomenon is in Tokyo at the moment. This hat I'm wearing is uh, a special dog style cowboy hat, meant for dogs, amazingly enough, even though it looks pretty good on me. It does, it makes you look saucy and uh, boisterous. Thank you very much. And down here you can see the kind of fashion item that many Tokyo dogs are wearing this season. This one is particularly ingenious for having little arms here so that you can pretend that you own not a dog, but a tiny person with a dog's 
face <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> and if you would like to give that face glasses, then you can give him these, which are called doggles. Why are you talking in that voice? That's the way dogs talk. <laughs> Is it? Yes. But dogs don't talk. They do to me. Ad, what's happened to your hair? Oh, um, Kento did it. Kento. And uh, I was too frightened to tell him I didn't like it. He's a fan of Guitar Wolf, who are actually in the studio now to play us out this week. When it comes to Mean and Moody, Jay Punk as Guitar Wolf are ahead of the pack. One, two, three, four. Formed in 1987, Tokyo's wildest rockers have a huge following here. They've released seven albums and even starred in the fantastic oh. UFO zombie rock and roll movie, Wild Zero. Like our friend Kento here, they pride themselves on their sweaty, balls-out rock and roll attitude and they're here tonight to wreck our speakers and our eardrums. Guitar Wolf, we salute you. See you next week. Yeah!